you all for being here. Uh, let me begin by saying that the health and safety of our students is our primary concern. We'll be happy to respond to your questions in that regard. We're committed to keeping the campus community informed. We've sent out uh, campus emails. We've got a website. We're updating that regularly with new information as it becomes available. We don't want to pretend that we know things we do not know. So we're going to, sometimes you're going to ask us questions and we're, the honest answer is we don't know yet or we're still working on that. But we'll tell you what we do know. Um, uh, and, and the other thing we would say is we hope people will channel their concerns into healthy practices like washing their hands regularly and things of that sort. And we'll be happy to, to remind uh, all of you as to what those practices are. Um, with that having been said, I'm going to turn this over to Greg Lichtenstein, who's one of the people that actually knows something about this. Thank you, Dr. Weber. Uh, as you probably read in the uh, press relief, release yesterday, uh, we evaluated and treated a uh, San Diego State University student for flu-like symptoms. The student was uh, experiencing a, a fever along with other re respiratory symptoms and tested positive for type A influenza. Based on that, she is uh, considered to have had a suspected case of swine flu. So first of all, I, I want to emphasize this is a suspected case. This is not uh, a confirmed case or even a probable case according to uh, CDC case definitions. Uh, the student is currently receiving treatment uh, and her condition is the student's condition is not considered life-threatening. Uh, we're working with the county health department to, to further investigate whether the student has swine flu. Uh, a specimen has been obtained from the student uh, and will be uh, tested today by the county health department. However, they cannot give us any definitive decision uh, whether the student has swine flu based on that testing. Uh, if it tests positive for what they call a non-typable strain of, of, of type A, then it goes on to uh, either the CDC or perhaps the state lab if that's up and running uh, for confirmatory testing for the actual swine flu strain. Uh, this student does not live on campus and will not be uh, returning to campus until the uh, condition improves to the point where the student is no longer infectious. Uh, we will be notifying the students' classmates uh, and professors today uh, that they may have come into contact with this student uh, and uh, to be basically on the lookout for symptoms. Uh, we encourage uh, everyone to take uh, necessary precautions, uh, common sense measures uh, in terms of uh, reducing uh, the uh, possible uh, contraction of this virus. Uh, that includes things like if you are staying uh, if you are sick staying home and not coming to school uh, secondly uh, if you're not sick uh, to make sure that you wash your hands frequently try to keep your distance from people who uh, may be coughing uh, this is an infection that's tra transmitted primarily uh, like all flu through droplet infections through the air uh, with coughing or sneezing uh, it may also be uh, transmitted through uh, secretions and possibly contacting somebody else who then wipes their eye or nose and, and infects themselves. So that's why the hand washing uh, part of this is very important. We also encourage students who are ill uh, to contact student health services. Uh, they will be given instructions as to whether they can just stay home and care for their symptoms if they uh, don't sound serious uh, or uh, if they do sound serious uh, to come in and be evaluated uh, and uh, get some treatment. We're not aware of any other suspected sw swine flu cases on campus uh, and uh, as Dr. Weber said following consultation with the San Diego uh, County Health and Human Services Agency public health officials, uh, campus uh, operations, including classes, are continuing. We also uh, want to emphasize that uh, faculty and staff who, who may be feeling ill should contact their health care providers, uh, not student health services. Any questions?
questions. How, yeah, many, many, which, which, how many and which classes have been involved and what other organizations or anything else on campus have done? So far, uh, the student appears to have only gone to uh, one or perhaps two classes on Monday during the time the student might have been infectious. As far as uh, other potential exposures through clubs, for example, uh, we're getting some more information on that. Uh, how, when will we know whether she has the swine flu? The, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, in terms of testing, what the county does first is they test to see if this is a particular strain of flu that they know. Uh, so that would be what they call typable strains. Uh, so these were the common strains that might have been circulating around this year. For, from my understanding, if it's not typable, then they send it on to the CDC for testing. So this typable, non-typable uh, evaluation, it sounds like the results should be ready late this afternoon on that one. But as far as confirmatory testing with regards to swine flu itself, that has to be done by the CDC. I would expect that might take another several days. Can you describe the student for us, uh, male, female? Uh, due to confidentiality issues, we, we can't release any sp more specific information. What about her major? So that we can know. So that's different. Can you talk about some of the measures might have been exposed? Okay. Two questions, sorry. As far as the major, I mean, basically that's relevant as far as what classes this particular person might have been in. <laughs> Uh, and so we're going to the individual classes rather than looking at what this person's major was. It sounds like it is, it is a female. It's a female. You said her. That. Well, I, I think, didn't you use the uh, pronoun she? You used her, used her sir. Her? I, I can't recall exactly. Not what everyone I said. received Dr. Weber's email last night, or at least some of the students that may have not received it at 10 30 or checking this morning. How are you going to contact the classes that the student was in to make sure that they have the information that possibly the person they were sitting next to was in fact? Right. Basically, enrollment services has a list of uh, all the classes that the student was in uh, and the list of the students that are in those individual classes and the email addresses of, of those students. So uh, unless we don't have an email address, it will be e email notification. And it is one Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. It's today being Wednesday. Were the teachers at least notified the professors this morning that it possibly was a student? Uh, I'm not aware of that yet. Was this a uh, student? CDC recommends seven day shutdown. So possible San Diego State should be shut down. Basically, a decision as far as, as whether to close the campus would be something that's made in close consultation with the county health and human services agency. So we, we would not be making that decision on their own. As far as the length of the shutdown, uh, that would again be their determination. What time did the student come to the Institute of Health Services yesterday? Uh, the student was seen yesterday afternoon. Any idea if she went to Mexico during spring break or any recent trip? There was no report of any travel outside the local area. Uh, would, uh, President Weber, are you willing to comment on the shutdown issue? Because this is a, what, a 27,000 student campus? Uh, <laughs> this is a 35,000 student campus. Thank you. 35,000 student campus. What would it take to shut it down uh, if the swine flu? Well, we are capable of doing that, and we have lots of communication techniques to do it. We shut the campus down with the wildfires last year, so we know how to do that. Uh, but the real question is, is there a real health indication that that's in the best interest of our student body? If we receive such an indication from County Health, that's when we begin to, to go through that process. But not until they Dr. Weber, can you talk about the pandemic plan in place that the university has? Uh, it's part of our regular planning. We have, we have a variety of contingency plans. One of them is for pandemics. And then how would this affect those students living in uh, campus or dormitories? Well, I mean, it will affect all of them, but, but one of the questions will be, what do we actually find out as the indications? In some cases, it might be better for students to stay in place than go elsewhere and put other people at risk. So the, this, is, this is one of the things that's really important. You have to listen to the experts that guide us as to what in the best interest of public health. And then what is your staff doing at Health Services to protect themselves 
either from the student that presented themselves yesterday as well as from possible students in the next few days? We're following the, the CDC guidelines. And essentially, uh, if a student arrives uh, at our building uh, at the information window uh, and they have a history of, of cough or, or upper respiratory symptoms, they're given a mask right there. Uh, and then uh, they're sent to the waiting room or possibly asked to wait outside on the chairs. Uh, as far as our staff goes, uh, you know, we're following the, uh, the recommendations in terms of uh, masking when exposed to the uh, to students that may be ill. Have you had an increase of uh, use of health services? That, that's a good question. And uh, on uh, on Monday, we did notice an increase in uh, students being seen for respiratory illnesses. In terms of a percentage, roughly somewhere in the range of about 40% increase. But we don't know, you know how many of those were people that just you know, saw the news and got concerned and came in and normally they would have just taken care of their colds themselves. Given the fact that students only have 48 hours to seek those um, antiviral drugs, do you think the university did the best service possible by waiting 8, 10 hours to notify the student body? I think we responded extremely rapidly to this. Are you doing extra monitoring of the classes the student was in or just the notifications? What, what all will you be doing? Well, basically, uh, the email that will be going out will be letting them know of, of, of symptoms of influenza and if they do notice that, to, to contact us. So is that still being done or has that been done? It's still being done. <laughs> I, I, We've been in a lot of meetings this morning, so we haven't been able to get the actual text together yet. I know that both you and the president have talked about shutting down the campus, but it sounds like what you're saying is that it is not a foregone conclusion that the campus would shut down if you have one confirmed that, that's case. That's correct. We, We've been in close contact uh, with the uh, health officers at, at the county, and they are not advising uh, shutdown of the campus uh, at this time based on one suspected case. There are many suspected cases throughout San Diego County. Right, but I guess if you have a confirmed case, it's a confirmed still not case may change the ball game. But it's not a foregone conclusion that, no. uh, that the university would have no. to shut down if you have one no. confirmed case. You can okay. no, I, I would just like to add that because it's another case of Greg's being in close contact with the county health department. As of an hour ago, an hour and a half ago, their advice was to treat the individual case, not, not shut down the institutions. Their advice can change. And that's why we're going to be in constant contact with them to get their best advice. Do you have a threshold? We don't have our own threshold. No, we, we, we wouldn't do that uh, without consulting the county and, and we're working closely with them like we've been on the phone several times already uh, since seven this morning yeah. just with your medical background can you talk about the timing out with all of this with the possibility if this is a confirmed case and yeah. all of these students being released from school in two weeks and finals are over and possibly going back to the school community uh, yeah i guess that is a concern if if it becomes a, a wider outbreak oh. And again, we'd be working with the county as far as their recommendations uh, with regards to whether students should travel outside the area or stay put. The, the, the problem is that this virus isn't just here in San Diego, as you all know. Uh, so you know, I, I have a feeling that, that they would probably not recommend staying put. We know that there's a percentage of students that come up from Tijuana each day to attend classes here. Any special recommendations either that the county is making through you or that you have for those students that are coming up from Mexico to attend classes? That's a good question and, and you may be more aware than I am, but I haven't heard of any cases coming out of Tijuana yet. I think there were some cases early on uh, two. in Mexico. Two in Tijuana yes. now? Uh, so we have more in San Diego. So where's the risk greater? The student coming to San Diego or, or going back home? I, I, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, ha we have suggested that students uh, curtail any unnecessary travel to Mexico uh, in, in uh, parallel with the State Department and CDC advisories.
We see a lot of people wearing masks occasionally and on the news. Does that help from getting the virus? Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's a great question, and you know, I wish I could answer that more specifically. There's there if you go to uh, the CDC re resources, you will see that uh, they talk about what they call face masks or what you might think of as a regular surgical mask, either these molded or, or the little fabric masks that people wear. That's different from what they call an N95 respirator, which also kind of looks like a molded mask, but it, it's a lot thicker and has a tighter fit. Uh, and right now, the overall impression I get is that, number one, if you're somebody who's suspected or confirmed uh, having swine flu, that you should be wearing a face mask. And basically, that's to prevent you from aerosolizing this virus uh, out and having other people breathe it in. Uh, the people that should be wearing the N95, these heavier duty masks, are more people that are in very close contact with uh, the uh, person who ha has been confirmed or suspected to have swine flu. Uh, and so what does close contact mean? Even the CDC sort of hedges on that. Sometimes they'll say three feet, sometimes they'll say six feet for what period of time. You know, we're thinking caregivers, you know, people uh, taking care of that person, getting the meals, uh, feeding them, giving them medication, uh, parents, for example, uh, probably more than you know, our population. Uh, caregivers would be uh, health care providers also. So the caregiver, close caregivers should be wearing N95 uh, masks when in close contact uh, with a suspected case. And the, the, as far as the general public using masks, I mean, if people want to use masks, they, they may. It's not clear what level of protection they provide uh, because it, the virus can be aerosolized. The virus can, can get breathed in through the sides of the mask uh, that aren't in close proximity to the face. But, you know, it, it, it may provide some protection. These one or two glasses that she was in, uh, what building? <laughs> I, I, I'm not aware of that level of detail, sorry. Even though she uh, lived off campus, did she have an on-campus meal plan? I'm not aware. <laughs> okay, we're going to have short availability for some one-on-one -on -one interviews, but I appreciate everybody coming.